Hi guys, it's Yvonne from the Journey Channel. Thank you for hopping on and checking out what Chris and I are up to. We just have a lot of little projects going on. There's always something to do here at the new house with the new workshop, especially since the holidays are coming. There's just those little projects with family and relatives going to come um, and visit and see your house for the first time. You know how that happens. And the next thing you know, you're like, well, I want to get this, 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 that done. So we have so many projects coming up and they're not big projects sometimes. Sometimes they're little projects, but you're just like, oh, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I just get that done? So I hope you enjoyed today's content of just little DIYs, little decors, just little here and there of what we have going on. So I think I'm going to start right off with some decor because you know, I like to shop. We go shopping all the time. I'm constantly out in the wild looking for sec secondhand finds. So I've been contemplating where to put a scale that I had bought at an estate sale. And I really didn't want to resell it. I really wanted to keep it for myself because I don't have one. And I've never run across one that I could afford. So I've been looking at these windows. See, I have these windows in my laundry room that are kind of like... You know, what do you want to put there? You don't want to cover up the windows, but some nice little decor would be nice. Ready? Yep. love it it does not take away from the windows you can still see out the windows it's not blocking them but I do want to add a little bit of something in it and I picked up this sweet Annie this dried sweet Annie from one of the booths in the antique mall where I'm at and I grabbed quite a few bunches they were like three dollars a piece so I think I got four to fill it up Oh, this makes my heart so happy. Just the simple greenery. I can change it out for the holidays. The Sweet Annie does have a, a nice smell to it. And I think it just accentuates, looks wonderful in my laundry room, which should be a happy space <laughs> since, you know, we all have to do laundry more than we want to. So one piece that I just recently scored was this amazing horse, but there's layers upon layers of dust. So how do you clean an item without getting it wet, without ruining that patina? And I always just start off with, so, with some of the Swiffer dry dusting cloths because they're, it's a magnet. It'll grab right onto that dust and hopefully I don't have to, I mean, because it's really just dust. It's not necessarily like it's been rubbed and ground in dirt or grease by any means. It's just layers of dust. That way I don't have to like get that leather seat wet or change any of the patina by getting it wet. Yeah, sometimes just wetting something does change the patina a little bit. I told you it was layers upon layers of dust. That's just what we pickers do when you're buying secondhand, especially at some type of a sale, like an estate sale or a you know, some of the state sales clean it, a lot of, some auctions clean it before, but I would say 90% of the time you're buying it as is. They're not going to spend the time to clean it. That is your job. So you have to learn to look underneath and see the beauty of the item, even when it is dirty, full of cobwebs or layers of dust bunnies. There's so many reasons I did not want to get this wet. I mean, I don't know how attached those little very old leather ears are, the buttons on the eyes, it's leather on the bridle. I, I just didn't really want to get it wet. I didn't want a chance 
um, it disintegrating because it is old. <laughs> and it, I've had things like that happen. I, I had had to think, oh, I should never have wetted that or I shouldn't have tried to do this. Now I'm on to the distinguished gentleman, which we really can't figure out if it's a pig, a rabbit, or an anteater. We really don't know. But getting this one wet, same thing. I I would leave watermarks. I would probably, you know, because this has been like a stained fabric to make him look the way that he looks. And then we have, you know, wool felt hat going on there. So just the Swiffer dusting cloth is all I'm using. And he actually has a little bit of a grease residue. So he might've been a little bit closer to the kitchen. It wasn't a very big house where we picked him up at, but it seems to be not only grabbing the dust, but taking that sticky greasy feel off of it too. I guess this would be the unglamorous side of reselling <laughs> is all the cleaning that you have to do of an item. You know, if you saw this haul, you never know what you're going to find. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about from the previous haul where I showed these, you never know what you're going to run across when you're buying an item. So these are the two items from that haul that I purchased for my own decor. One being that beautiful stocking <laughs> form dryer and then that beautiful horse so where to add them in you know that's the hard part and i've never been in love with this arch here or having the crock there it was just you know you just kind of you know you kind of have to live in a place and I'm like yeah you know i i don't necessarily love it and I do know I need to keep a lot of this space open, but I have a lot of cracks and it's okay if I move my cracks around so I can showcase that beautiful horse. So yes, I do have a passion for Crocs, but a lot of these Crocs are unsellable. A lot of people wouldn't buy them because they are cracked. And when you buy things at auctions, a lot of times they come in groupings. So I just don't want to donate them. I don't want to throw them away. So this is a perfect way to display the ones that most people wouldn't want to buy. So one is good, one is cracked. nice thing is I do have a booth so I can resell the ones that are in good condition so that's what I was picking out like if I'm going to remove some of these I need to remove the ones to resell if I wanted to resell them that are pristine that are not cracked maybe I overthink my decor but I really am a minimalist I don't want to I don't like clutter makes me anxious I like organization so Sometimes that's just what I do. I will change my decor out, which might seem like not any big deal, but to me it is a big deal. But oh, look at look at that distinguished gentleman there. He is just gorgeous. So now I need to deal with this. I absolutely love the chair that I redid, and chairs are iffy if they even resell. Um, and you're, it's hard to get out what you put into them. So. And I didn't necessarily love the arch, and Chris actually Brad nailed that in, but he, that age does not go with the age of the horse. So I thought I was going to put this leg form here, but I'm like, oh, 
I I don't I wanted to love it, but you know when you know. I'm like, nope, I don't love it there. I don't love it higher. I want to put the chair back. I'm going to remove the crock that has the extra legs that are just random legs um, that I had filled in there. But yeah, I, I just, I, I didn't, I don't love it. So I got to rethink where I want to put this. And then I love the horse there. Peach doesn't seem to mind because those windows always have to be cracked open just a little bit so he can sit on this bench and look out at the world. That's just his space. So I moved the chair. So then I brought, these are like more of a sewing bucket than a firkin, but they kind of look like firkins because they have that that split little edge in them. They don't have lids or anything, but I love the older wood. So yeah, that older wood then ties in with my yummy pie safe with all the firkins and sugar bu buckets on there. And I like not having anything right there. I think I just, I just like it. So for now, until, until I buy something new, right? That's how that works. So, and you can tell by hairdo changes that I sat on it for a couple days to decide. It's not just, I'm not just going to throw stuff up. I'm really trying to think wisely. And I thought, you know what? I have the sock forms, the children's sock form that I have framed in this little laundry space. So to me, it only makes sense to take that small shaker down and add it into here. So yes, I like this little space. I stuck the swan. Actually, I just stuck that swan down there because I needed a place to set him and I thought I was going to sell him. But then I loved him there. So then there he sat. But yeah, just some pretty decor. Love the scale. These two coordinate with each other. And then these are just where like my um, scent beads are and my Tide Pods are. So that works out. So. They're hidden, but they're not hidden. So it's kind of just how it goes. You know, you have to live in a place and you think, I'm gonna put it here, I'm gonna put there, this makes sense. We need to get it moved in. And then we decided that we want to move our sectional couch. Okay. <laughs> well, it only makes sense for the longer part to be against that wall. And that's, it, the angle for the longer part is kind of awkward to watch TV and nobody seems to be sitting on that side. So there you go. That's what we're going to do. And if you have to move in a sectional, you know, it's not an easy task. And, and behind our sectional, Chris had made this little make do plug in to be able, because once you put something in front of the wall, you can't get to the plugins and you know, the sectionals are big, so you don't really have side tables. Our cat Peach is going to think that it is Christmas Day for him because apparently that's where he's been storing all his t toys. Isn't that amazing? Those little critters, <laughs> like everything goes underneath something. So if it's not the couch or the chairs, it's the refrigerator. There's always a ton of toys. It's like, oh, I've got a whole bunch of new toys. What did you find underneath the couch for the cat? <laughs> So that seems to work, switching the couch at this angle. Uh, more people will sit in front of it. It's, it's sad because you kind of block off the windows from opening them up. It kind of is what it is. Um, yeah, we like it this way. We just use like a simple old stool for like a little side table because the chunky ones just, it's just hard to fit them in anymore with the sectionals and then it's the night it's the right height you can like put a drink or your phone down in this right height and I brought in my other estate sale find of that yummy old laundry basket so I just put extra blankets and pillows in here so that it's not cluttering up the couch and then Peach is like nope you're not fluffing up this chair because I'm going to sit I'm going to sit in it you know they rule the house right y'all I took my green wreath down because, you know, we're fall now, so green isn't really in. And I'm still looking for something over here. I just haven't found the right thing yet. But I will someday. But I, I like this arrangement. I think we both like this arrangement a little bit better. So I brought this chair in here so there's some extra seating um, when family's over for Thanksgiving. 
I can't move the poofs because that is Peach's way to sit and look out the window. Yeah, Peach, I'm talking about you. And then if you haven't seen, I did calm down my little entertainment center a little bit. I took some bottles off of it. I thought maybe I had it a little too cluttered. That happens. And then I brought my... I brought my ladder over here. I really like the height with the ladder and then the dough bowl and then the crock. That was a gift, so I won't get rid of that. You know, so far, you know what we do. We just get inspiration one day and we start moving things around. You know how one project leads into another project. I just recently ran across a pew. I have been looking for a old church pew to put in our entryway, but it could only be so wide. And this one is beautiful. It needs some work. <laughs> it needs a glue job. Um, it is cracked. And we found it in an antique mall in somebody's outdoor booth. It almost broke my heart. I'm like, no, no, we're going into the rainy season in the fall. And, oh, that crack's just going to get worse if it gets rained on <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just that kind of person that thinks about wood like that. You know, barn words differently, but, you know, this, or church pews being in the weather was not going to help it by any means. So Chris is just going to go ahead and put some tight bond glue and get that crack. He's not going to, the crack's not going to be gone, but at least it's going to be clamped and glued back together. But it needs to be freshened up from sitting in the weather, being in the sun, being dry, being old. Um, there's kind of like a bumpy residue from being in the weather that raised the wood. So he went over the entire piece with some steel wool and now he's going to just use the Howard's Restore and Finish in the Golden Oak to give it a drink and bring it back to life. This is amazing product. We have a few different of the stain shades on hand. Just for, look at how quickly it, that it just makes that wood so happy and you can you can actually apply it with the steel wool or if you really want to get it in there and really make sure that grain is nice and smooth you can use we just have the double pour steel wool but oh gorgeous here is where i'd like it to go right in this space i told you we did not have a lot of room right now we just have an outdoor bench so you can take off your shoes hang your coat up, but I don't really like, it's not a very small entryway and it's getting cluttered now that it's getting colder. So we're going to, we're going to rethink this area altogether, but yes, I, and that is a bench that Chris made and so I will always be keeping it. And you can really tell how long our house is the, I'm standing on the entry from the garage door look at it's like a bowling alley I've always showed the like from the living room to the kitchen but I've never shown the entryway to the, li the living room and you can just see my distinguished gentleman down there peach giving me the eyeballs because he won't even go into he won't go as far as into the laundry room by any means it's so funny he's we've been here for months now but he will not go any farther than that he is he that's just the type of cat he is <laughs> yeah you can just love his eyeballs so i thought this simple coat rack would work but it's just it's too much it's too much clutter um so on the other side where you enter from the garage to the entryway there's this little space that i think would work for like a coat closet like I think I, it's probably what it was actually made for since it doesn't have any shelves down there. It has some shelves up high, but not down low. And everything doesn't have to be fancy. So Chris just grabbed some pallet wood. I have a whole bunch of these hangers for something that I bought. Um, so there's plenty to go around. So he's just he just cut them down to size and he's just going to add those coat hangers to those pieces of wood and put it in that little closet, just a place to put your coats. I know I could have painted it, but the one side is plywood. So we all know that plywood does not paint very well. Then I would have had to caulk it, but really it is what it is. It's just a simple closet coat rack and I really wanted to get this <laughs> this pew put in here 
anyway. So, you know, we're all worried about the home decor than we are a, clo a closet to hang our coats. So, yeah, the coat rack is not going to stay because then the coats would have hung over the pew. And y'all, look at it just... That just fits. Just. <laughs> it couldn't have been one half inch more, that's for sure. So this coat rack is going to be taken down. I always loved it because it's matched our cupboard that's on the other side. But I love that pew. I've just always wanted one. Just fits. Oh. Nope, not painting it. Leaving it as is. You kind of need a place for a guest or just a simple one coat not a whole bunch just the simple coat tree will work since we're going to take this down didn't like my purse hanging there see it just it that just is too much i need to find some decor for above this now but just a simple coat rack will do in the corner so how high do you want do you want it like up here i would think you'd want it up here yeah i think you'd want it higher yeah so if somebody so somewhere did around there yeah, it kind of just blends right in with the... So I have to stop regular house decorating because now it is Christmas decorating time. So you have to come back and check out that. But I decided above the pew to put a shelf that I've had for years because I love this shelf. It holds a lot of treasures. So I'm glad that it's just a neutral and it doesn't take away from the pew, which I said <laughs> is now Christmas and packages are coming and I need to start decorating for Christmas. So that's how we're going to end this video on a note that now, yep, we hung at the day of Thanksgiving and now we're hosting. So this is how it's going to stay for right now. So you guys asked what kind of recipes we make for Thanksgiving. Chris makes yummy pumpkin rolls. I used to make them, but then I got busy, but he enjoys doing it. <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> What did you say? I love you. <laughs> I think he said I was lazy. Oh, I know he just took over it. He used to watch football. Mass produce. He'll probably make what six? Um, maybe more if we have eggs. I think we have eggs. Yeah, it takes like three eggs. A roll. Do you want to see what he's doing? Let me see. There you go. Three eggs. Some pumpkin. I can link the recipe, y'all, if you want to like it. Oh, look at them double batching here. Well, that's the nice thing about this house is there's two ovens. That's right. We have two ovens so he can cook. So <laughs> yeah. Taking four hours, it only takes two. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, smart way to do it, isn't it? It's a really simple recipe. It is, it's been well used. It's been well loved. It is one of our most <laughs> recipes. Been rode on, been wet. Yeah. Anyway, I can link it for y'all. Get demands from your brother, my family. <laughs> yes, yes. It's one of those things you make it, and then everybody wants you to make it. Bring it, buy it. We don't buy it, we don't sell it. We just give it to them. Oh, so, yeah. Pumpkin, eggs, sugar, sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg. Hopefully, we have more. Uh oh. And baking soda, not powder. We did yeah. that mistake one time. Yes, yes. And it was like liquid. <laughs> Once that's all in there, 
you whisk it, all the wet ingredients. And actually on your YouTube channel about three years ago, I think I did a video on this. It was one of the first ones I did solo because you had asked me to. Oh, I wonder if it's still on there. Some I don't know. It was a big flop anyways. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just throw in segments, not the whole thing. And then the last thing is flour. Ooh. That's the worst part is flour is so fluffy. So fluffy. Chris was so excited at one of the auctions we went to because the pan that we've always used, we only had one deep pan like this and i've had it for 20 some plus years ran across these pans at an auction and then they were brand new and chris is like those are our punk and roll pans we are going to get them i think they were like two dollars for the bunch awesome This is the part that people think is difficult. But you take that cake out of the oven, let it cool for five minutes, yep. and then you wrap it up in like a dish towel. A dish towel. We use a clean one. We prefer preferably for what, 15 minutes, isn't it? Yep. And then that lets it cool just enough that it's pliable, not like it's going to crack. Well, it helps get the shape too. Yes, of the roll. yes, it rolls up into the shape. And now he. He made up two batches of the cream cheese frosting. I'll have to video that. But what the yummy <laughs> cream cheese frosting. Oh my goodness, it smells heavenly in here right now. It smells like the holidays with the cinnamon and the nutmeg and the pumpkin. Oh my goodness. It's his dream come true with a double oven, that is for sure. <laughs> yeah, it used to take what? three, four hours to do six of them. Yeah. Yeah, we'd watch the whole Lions game on a Sunday. We don't have a TV in this area though, so. Not yet. No. He likes his football. And then he has some press and seal all ready for it to be rolled up on. It does stick to the towel a little bit. You just have to go gingerly. And that's what's going to hold it all together. And then as I go on this, I usually compress it a little bit more. And there we go. Ta-da! Voila. Voila. Cheese, butter. He's making a double batch because he's doing two cakes at once. Oh, he's not measuring. He's going all I am. And then you mix it. He knows. You beat it to death, basically. That makes it creamy. Oh, it's the messiness now, the powdered sugar. I'm going to do one cup at a time. <laughs> so it doesn't cool. That's the yummy goodness. So it's two cups per batch. So you're doing four cups, right? No, it's one cup per batch. Oh, just one cup. Oh. Because you want it to stay gooey. Gooey. Oh. Yeah, but I haven't made them in a while. He took over years ago.
flow and with cream cheese, which makes it even better. So we put them in the freezer the next day after you bake them. You put them in the fridge first to let them cool. And then we put them in the freezer. First slice is always the tester slice. Okay, one of our most requested at the holiday season is the pumpkin roll. So, oh yeah, you can't just bring one out. You gotta at least do two. So, yummy. This is the one thing that we loved about this house, this open island kitchen space. I think that the family for Thanksgiving filled it wonderful. What a space. Not everybody's crowded.